What is up guys, Fahir here from awesometudes.com and let us add our remaining obstacles in the game. For that we need to go into sprites and then enemies and obstacles. The first one will be our tree that we're gonna add but it's too big as you can see here. It's a treezilla so it can kill our our ninja just by adding it to the scene. So what we need to do is we need to change its scale. So for the scale X I'm gonna say 0 0.4, 0 0.4 for the Y. So this is well how we are gonna use it. I'm satisfied with this height or how large our tree is. We are gonna attach a box collider 2D on it. Now we are not gonna leave it like this as you see. We are gonna rescale it so the size on the X is gonna be 4.43 and the size on the Y is gonna be 3.44. Of course we are gonna well, offset it. So the offset X is going to be 0.51 and the offset Y is going to be negative 1.3. Or actually we can leave it at negative 1. So negative 1 can be the offset for our tree. We are going to create a tag for the tree. So we're going to click on add tag. Click on the plus button here and we're going to say here enemy tree and hit enter. Select the tree here in the hierarchy and we are gonna say here or select the enemy tree tag. So this is our enemy tree. We are also gonna have our enemy ninja which is this dude right here who is also a ninja zilla. So yeah, we're gonna resize him of course. So for the ninja enemy, we're gonna say 0.25 for the X, 0.25 for the Y. And we are gonna add a box collider to the component on him. Of course, we are gonna resize it, not leave it like this. So the size on the X is right here and we're gonna save 1.99 or actually we're gonna save 0.2. Actually 2, not 0.2. So 2 for the size on the X. Size on the Y is gonna be, let's say 5.38. And offset X is gonna be 1.81, offset Y is gonna be 0.62 and voila here is our enemy ninja and we are gonna set him to be a trigger so we are gonna make him to be a trigger and we are also gonna tag him so here we're gonna add a tag which I'm simply gonna call enemy and I'm gonna click save Select the ninja enemy and I am gonna, well, tag him with the enemy tag. The last enemy that we have is our B, but our B, as you can see here, well, we have how many? Eight of these Bs. So how can we add them? Because if we drag and drop the B like this, this is not what we want to have in our game. So select the B right here in sprites, enemies, and obstacles. And you see here in the inspector panel, we have the sprite mode. This is a drop down list. So we have single, multiple, and polygon. Currently it is set to single, which means Unity is treating this image or this asset as a single image, but we need to have these Bs separated. In order to have them separated, we are gonna select multiple instead of single. Let me hit apply here at the bottom so that this change applies to this image. And now we are going to click on Sprite Editor, which is going to open this thing that you see right here. This is the Sprite Editor where we can slice each individual bee by itself because this or these bees are a sequence of animations. Unity can slice this well, on its own, but you can drag or you can simply draw. You see here, I just drew this rectangle with, well, left clicking and drawing it and voila, there it is. In order to delete it, hold command, press D on Windows, control and delete. Actually, I said D, but it's backwards or that delete. So control delete on Mac, command and the button above enter. But Unity can slice this pretty good on its own by simply clicking here slice. You see we have the sprite editor and if you click on the slice here, it's going to say automatic. So we want to allow Unity to slice or detect automatically where it needs to slice things. Pivot will be the center and I'm going to click slice and bam, here it is. So you see Unity can slice this pretty good on its own, but sometimes it needs a little bit of help. So as you can see here, we can resize these because we're not going to leave it like this here. We're going to resize it a little bit, something like this. And select this one, also resize it right here and on, well, down. Let me just select this one. This one is okay. The third one, let me see where it is, just a little bit here. You can simply, well, redrag these as you can see to resize them. 
just so that it fits the B and it does not go outside of the B. So something like this will do. Select this one. Okay, we need to move this back. Now, as I said, Unity is pretty good at slicing things, but sometimes it needs help from us, as you can see right here. And this one also is the last one like this and we are good to go. And I'm going to hit apply. So when everything here is done, you see, you can hit apply, which is right here. And these changes will be applied to this image. So now when we click on the drop down list of this image, we can select these bees. Now by accident, Unity has added somewhere another slice, which is well, this empty image. So ignore the first part. I'm not going to go back. So you will need to go back here and search where that slice is. Well, actually it's here. Well, we'll find, we found it right away. So select it and delete it. If you don't find it, it's, well, not a problem. And I can hit apply now and bam, here we are. As I said, this is not a problem. Even if it's there, just ignore it. Don't take the first image, but select all other images. As you can see here, B from one up to nine, drag and drop the B right here in our, well, scene view and go into animations to save that animation. New folder. B animation. I'm going to hit enter. And here I am going to say B animation. It's not like you need to be the animation, but this is the B animation. So B, let me just rename it here to B in our hierarchy panel. And I am going to rescale it. So the scale is going to be 0 0.4, 0 0.4 for X and the Y. We are going to add a component on it. So it's going to be a box collider 2D. And of course, we are not going to resize it this time. I said, of course, but actually, yeah, we're not going to resize it this time. I'm pretty satisfied with the result right here. Maybe we can resize it a little bit to be smaller, but that's, we can test that later on to see if there is a need to do so. And here we're also going to attach a rigid body 2D and we are going to make him kinematic. So here we're going to say kinematic. And we're going to tag the B as the enemy. So tag the B as the enemy and voila, we are done. We need to go here into the prefabs, enemy prefabs. So drag and drop the tree, drag and drop the enemy, drag and drop the B. And select our spawners or side boundary. So select all four of these. And now for the enemy size, we are going to set, well, we have four enemies. So we're going to set size to four. So now I'm going to drag and drop the B, drag and drop the ninja enemy and drag and drop the tree. We don't have to do anything else except attach a script to move our enemies, but we will see that in a second. We can now safely delete them here from the scene. If I hit the play button now, as you can see here, if I hit the play button, Actually, yeah, I was why I was tripping that we actually coded. We need to code the spawning of our other enemies. So yeah, I was tripping that we have already coded that. So sorry for that. We have attached our enemies. Now else if our random enemy index is not equal to one, if it's equal to one, we will spawn the flag in the middle. Else, if it's not equal to one or zero, excuse me, we are going to create a new game object, which I'm going to call enemy OBJ, which is going to be equal to instantiate enemies inside of it. We are going to say random enemy index like this. We are also going to say here vector three, which is going to be our enemy scale, which is going to be equal to enemy OBJ dot a local scale. So actually enemy obj dot transform dot local scale. And now we are going to determine, are we going to spawn that enemy on the left or on the right? So we're going to see here if our random dot range from zero to two, if it's greater than zero. So it's a 50 50 chance to spawn this game object or position it either on the left or on the right. So here we're going to spawn it right. So we're going to say here enemy obj dot transform that position is going to be equal to spawn positions and the position that's at the zero index. So here we're going to say transform position because the position that is at the zero index, we set it to be the right spawner. If you remember, so this you need to double check to make sure, but the right spawner should be at element zero. So right spawner and also here right spawner and also here right spawner. So the right spawner is on index zero. So here we are using index zero. We are also going to take the enemy obj. So enemy obj dot 
scale, or actually here, enemy scale.x is going to be equal to negative of mat app absolute value of enemy so enemy scale dot x. Why is it like this? Well, we need to make sure that our enemies are also facing the correct side. We don't want our enemy to be, for example, here. So we don't want our enemy. If I take the player and pretend that he is the enemy, I don't want the enemy to be here like this. Instead, I want him to be here like this. So I want him to face the correct side. And if, well, in order to do that, we need to change the scale. And we already explained that we are changing the scale to make the game object face the correct side. Else, if the random range is not greater than zero, this one right here, we are going to spawn it to the left. To the left. So spawn left. So here we're going to say enemy obj, but let me just copy and paste this right here. So enemy obj transform position is going to be equal to spawn positions and the index that's at or element that's at index one, which is the left spawner. And here we are not going to use the negative, but we are going to use the positive of the scale X to make the game object face the correct side. And the last thing that we need to do is take the enemy obj dot transform dot a local scale to be equal to enemy scale because well this is going to face the enemy in the correct direction. Let me go back here in Unity and what we need to do here, let me just clear the console. We are going to test it out now. So if I hit the play button, we are going to see our enemies being spawned, but we're also going to see one problem. You see the B, it is spawned. The ninja is also spawned, but what is happening? Well, they're not moving down. So we need to go here, select the B, ninja enemy and the tree and attach enemy move script. Set the move speed to five. And if I hit the play button now, we will see that they are being spawned and going down. You see, we have our flag now. Over there is the tree. So if I go back here, bam, here is the tree. We just pass it. Here is the B. Here is the tree again. Let's hope to see the ninja. Here is the ninja. And you see that depending on where he is spawned, be that left or right, you see the B now is facing the correct side. Here on the left, B is facing the correct side. Let's see the ninja. Do we have the ninja? So we have here, I see ninja clone, but let's hope he's on the right side. Well, he is not, but anyways, yeah, this one is. You see, he is facing the correct side, which is the effect that we achieved by using this right here and this right here, and then assigning it to the scale of our enemy OBJ that we have spawned right here. Now, one thing that we are going to do is the following. Our tree is going to have the enemy move script, but the B and the ninja enemy are going to have different scripts. They are going to move them down, but they are also going to make the B attack our player and the ninja also. It will make them attack the player. So we need to code that with a separate script. I just put these enemy move scripts on them so that we can demonstrate that this actually works and that we have enemies spawned in our game. So starting from the next video, we will code our B, then we will code the ninja. Until then, Fahir here from awesomedudes.com. I will see you guys in the next video.